for those that um, do want to become sports psychologists, take us through the steps and um, what you need to do to be a qualified sports psychologist. Yeah, so um, if you want to do psychology, basically the first few years undergrads, um, you can do it through a sports science degree, a science degree, just go straight into arts psychology. So the undergrad is pretty similar no matter where you go. Um, I found that doing the human movement sports science degree and then with the psych just gave me a really good ability to be able to um, talk to the dietitians and the doctors and the physios and have a really good understanding. Yeah. Um, so that was my logic for wanting to do it that way. Yeah. Um, once you've done your three years, you then can do a graduate diploma, so fourth year, mm-hmm. or you can do an honours as your fourth year. And then once you've finished your fourth year, you have to go and do a fifth and sixth year. So that'll be um, a master's or you can pick a PhD. And after that, you're a general psychologist. Mm -hmm. And then once you're a general psychologist after six years, you then go and do, you know, anywhere from 18 months to two years working as um, a sports psych where you've got a supervisor. How competitive is it to get your foot in the door and what would be some tips that you would give for... I guess, um, for those people that want to work in high performance? Yeah, look, I think it's getting really competitive now and and the courses, you know, there's not a heap of courses around. But if you, I I would say, as soon as you know this is what you want to do, start reading. Um, There's so many books, there's so many resources, there's so many podcasts um, and things like that. So you'll hear, you know, some of the best that are are around doing these sort of things um, to learn from. I think the biggest, for me, my biggest asset has always been networking. Mm -hmm. Um, Every opportunity I got, I was prepared to take it. I would drive two hours to be able to get an opportunity with, you know, a netball team or, you know, I drive an hour and a half this way to to be able to go and work with a swimming club. So I think um, embracing any opportunities that you actually get. And the other side of it would be, apart from reading and and listening to podcasts and things, is... um, making sure that if there's conferences on and things like that, where you can see there's a sports psych stream and there's some sports psychs that are well-known or, or in certain organisations that you want to be in. How did you go about building the rapport with athletes and building those soft skills? Yeah, I think that's, you know, a big component is is for me. I think I've always said, you know, you've got to make sure that, that you listen and, and just try and keep your head and your bum in, in the same place and not, try and think too far ahead and go, right, I'm just going to embrace this opportunity. And, and every every athlete has a story. And, and for me, I find them that interesting that it doesn't matter if it was an under-16 state player or mm. it's a you know an Olympian or an AFL player. I think it's actually just about listening and giving them your time and working with them. Not The textbook gives you a really good baseline of understanding of, you know, areas. But I think the athlete is the one that gives you the best guidance on what you need to do with them and what they want. And then it's a really collaborative relationship. When you're feeling a bit overwhelmed and you're frustrated with yourself because you've made a mistake or you've let down a teammate, whatever it might be, um, what what should you do? Because if you hear about mindfulness, breathing exercises, is it speaking to a teammate? What would be, or is it depending on the individual? Yeah, look, the first thing I would always say to an athlete is ask yourself, what can I control? Because mm. human beings by nature, we're control freaks. We don't yep. like not being in control because then we don't feel safe and we don't feel like we're going to get where we want to go. So us having a really good dialogue of, well, what can I control right now? You know what? I can just work on my footwork. Um, I'm just going to focus on, you know, um, getting good percentage tennis for the next two points and just get myself feeling pretty good. Um, mm. I'm just going to go to the back of the court and take a few breaths, you know, um, so those sort of things, let's say if it's a tennis match, if it's a football match, when, when you come to the bench, um, it might be talking to somebody, it might be doing some breathing, it might be going for a walk, um, it might just be getting um, a footy in your hand and just doing a few ground balls and just getting a bit of touch. For, for a footballer's week and you're in season, um, yep. what are some things that you do with the players earlier in the week and then and then what, and that's recovering and, I guess, um, absorbing the game whether it was a loss or a win or whatever it was and then yep. um, to help reset for the preparation for the next week and then also what does it look like the day before a game is that something that you work with the individuals to create like a uh, minus one day prep 
Yeah, so I think it's um, it's very much individual. Like you'll have different uh, routines, different assessments, different ways of doing it with different athletes because they're all playing different positions and they've got different personalities. So, um, you know, you might obviously as a um, as a team, you, you sit down and they'll do their review and it might be asking questions to the entire group. Well, you know, my big thing is, is in so many teams I've seen reviews done where it's we did this and we didn't do this and we didn't do this. And I'm, my question is, okay, great. That's a verbal replay of what happened. I saw that, watched that. Um, mm-hmm. Why not? Why not? Like you've got to ask that why question. Why didn't we follow our structure here? Why did we panic in this situation? Um, you know, why, why didn't you get the reaction time that you want or why didn't you remember our plays or, or whatever? And often they, they may not be able to answer that why question, but you've got to keep trying to find it and keep asking it. 